to the Bullfrog Ventanita. I'm Jeremiah Bullfrog, and we're going to cut it up. Croquetas y cocktails! Let's go! It's Wednesday. It's 7 o'clock. Oh, and I'm parched. we got an exciting show for everybody. Appreciate everybody for, for checking in. Like we do around this time, let's take a little roll call. Who's with me? We're doing the, uh, the interactive uh, live stream. You're going to learn. I'm going to drink. We'll look at gratuitous food porn, and uh, hopefully we'll all come away from this show a little bit better. So Jose and I are super excited to uh, present something near and dear to my heart. We're repping a 305. We've got Miami in the house. We're most definitely going to bring some, some flavor. And um, Jose, why don't you drop that, uh, that intro? Hey, 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 here we go. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, it's Wednesday, live, 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 seven o'clock, oh, isolation station, the isolation station, what's good, you know what that means, here we go, here we go. Thanks everybody for joining. I uh, thought I would start off the program this evening with something that I need quite dearly, and that's a cocktail. We're going uh, whiskey. We're staying brown uh, this evening. I picked up a bottle of Woodford. Uh, it's a great bourbon. And um, we've got a cool little um, a cool little variation on the Negroni. Uh, last week was Negroni, we were doing gin, you know, I got a little crazy. Uh, gin makes me kind of warm and flush, so I get a little, uh, hoo-hoo. So today I thought I would go whiskey, and see if we can't um, start hanging from the rafters and that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, real cool variation. Um, we're doing a Boulevardier. So, same concept as the Negroni, just with whiskey or... Um, or with rye and uh, we've got a, a little extra special treat later on uh, I'm gonna do uh, some bar lab cocktails so stick around we got croquetas we're repping Miami we've got the 305 in the house and uh, we're gonna get this party started so here we go um, dropping in the Woodford in a uh, in a tin we've got the sweet vermouth this is the Antico Carpano Nothing crazy here, guys. And um, an ounce on this Americano. So that was about an ounce and a half. Um, so again, if you guys remember from the Negroni, it is a stirred cocktail. Um, and then uh, I just like to put it in a tin. Uh, since it's whiskey, uh, I like it real nice and cold. Um, I'm not a huge fan of drinking room temp whiskey. Uh, basically because the room temp in Miami is uh, it's a little warm um, so just giving it a good stir and then we'll go in on a on a big old ice cube that's been tempered in our pretty glass get rid of some of these so tell me how's everybody doing who's excited for uh, for croquetas 
What's your favorite to go order uh, at the Ventanita? Are you a, um, just doing a little fresh orange peel? Are you a, an empanada kind of person? Um, you know, do you prefer uh, a, another of the treats from, from the Miami window? For, for those of you who are not uh, South Florida based, let's talk about a little bit of culture. Uh, so in Miami, on just about any given street corner, does not look nice. You, uh, cheers, cheers. So, mmm, mmm, mmm. Hoo hoo, man. That is exactly what I needed. Um, now we're guaranteed for a nice show. Um, so on uh, every street corner in Miami, we have what is called affectionately as a ventanita or a window, which we've sort of recreated here. Shouts to Carla for all your hard work. Appreciate you. Mm. Mm. So um, the ventanita is your place for, for coffee. It's your place to socialize. It's your place to get a snack, right? So, um, what what uh, what what they generally do is stuff that's already sort of pre-made. They keep it in sort of like a hot box or a holding. It's like one of those glass cases with some heat lamps. Um, you know, everyone sort of has their favorite. Um, you know, I like uh, Cow Bakery on South Beach. Um, you know. It's all about just finding your your favorite spot and then hitting it up. Um, you know, there's some funny things about the culture and uh, goes along with like Miami's sort of like attitude about things. Is there is no line at the Ventanita, right? It's just a window and it's a counter. And then there's a bunch of ladies hustling and bustling behind. And you just got to get up there. You got to sort of fight your way up and, you know, elbow old ladies out of the way. No, no, don't do that. Um, you know, you got to fight for your little spot up in the window and put your order in and you just generally kind of like yell it out. Uh, eye contact is a huge thing. Um, but so the croqueta is a, uh, it's a fritter for a better, for a, a different term, right? Um, in, uh, in English it, it would be, or it's probably a French term croquette. Um, so anything that's fried, it could be different shapes. It doesn't necessarily have to be the, uh, the cylinder, um, it could be ham, it could be chicken. Um, you could do literally anything. Um, traditionally, the croqueta was a, a way to use up leftovers. Um, it, it comes from Spain and um, made its way to, to, the, um, to the islands, Cuba, and, and then eventually Miami, um, where we kind of put our own stamp on it. You know, anywhere from like our supermarket to these ventanitas across the city uh, to, you know, some of the higher end establishments, you can get these croquetas or the fritters um, as a great snack appetizer. It's an awesome way to, to start off your meal or, you know, even like breakfast, um, that kind of thing. I'm sure Michelle knows what's up and, uh, and Bev. Um, yeah, I, I know you know uh, what's good as well. So we're gonna get into it. Um, I want to uh, to run down um, the process. I'm, I'm gonna do a vegan version as well. So two croquetas today. We got another cocktail on decky. I'm gonna take a sip of this while uh, my cocktail gets a little watered down. Uh, Jose's gonna show you some cocktail tunes. ¿Quién es el último? Yo. ¿Qué número tiene? Esto. Ay, qué bueno, así acabo pronto con esta sofocación, porque la verdad que la cola me tienen sin respiración.
is uh, Darone, the homie. Uh, he's two for two on the old theme song, uh, and it is absolutely that New Orleans flair. Um, and so, I just want to to touch again on on the uh, croqueta. So, uh, traditional Spanish croquetas, um, you know, they use a really really good quality ham. Um, you know, when you're done carving the uh, the jamón off the bone. There's a lot of like little pieces that sort of cling on to the bone. That's amazing to make croquetas with. You chop it up really fine. Um, you know, for this recipe, we're gonna do a chicken version. Uh, as always, down below in the description on YouTube, you can check out the recipes. I have tested them to make sure they work. Uh, and so you'll see there's the recipe for the, um, there's the recipe for the chicken croqueta and a mushroom one as well. We'll get into that and you'll get a little sneak peek. Uh, Jose, I was just thinking, did everybody see the Bovadier recipe card? Uh, I think I missed it. Um, did, did that pop up, senor? Awkward pause here while we just figure out. Want to make sure if anybody wants to make a Bovadier that they've got the recipe. All right, well, let's move along. Let's get into, uh, into croquetas. Um, I'm gonna run it down uh, the one, two, three on the old croquetas. Uh, so the basis of it is a roux uh, that you turn into a bechamel, which is a fancy name for white sauce. Um, so, um, so it starts off with fat and flour um, on the chicken version, we're going to start off with some, some, with some butter. We're going to cook it down and, uh, and add the flour. So while I'm yapping, let's get uh, started. Hey, Jose, how about cam two? How are we looking? All right. Technology's in our favor. Did everybody see that flash bang boom? So we've got a nice wide pan. And, um, and we're going in with our butter. So we've got um, 55 grams of unsalted butter. And that's so we can just control the salt in the recipe. Uh, you know, if you guys had chicken um, for dinner and you're thinking of a way to use up that beautiful chicken, um, this is a great recipe. You know, uh, the croquetas are... So I, I think this is a good enough angle, and we'll get to chop it up while we uh, while we get this croqueta started. Anyways, um, Jose uh, shouts to you for for keeping me on the on the regular. Appreciate it. Uh, so here we go, guys. We've got our butter. 
and it's uh, 55 grams again, unsalted butter. We're heating it up in this nice little pot. I've got my finely diced onion going in. And that's the sound you want to hear. Um, so this is just a variation on, on making a roux. Um, you know, traditional French thickener. Uh, when you're making roux, it, it's the basis for, for a lot of amazing um, sauces and, and soups and, and what have you. Um, it, it's just a, like a, a shishi way to, to thicken up things. And then you get all that full fat flavor. Um, so we've got our, our pan on low because the technique here is to sweat out your onion. Um, and what that means is you're not really looking for too much color. Um, bechamel is actually a white sauce. Um, and um, when, I made, uh, when I made the mushroom, uh, mix earlier this morning. I, I got a little color on it because mushrooms are so dark. It doesn't really matter um, When you're making croquetas The filling that you make which we're doing right now in front of your eyes is is what you know When you bite into it and you see sort of the center. That's what you end up with um, So it's real important that it's seasoned really well um, And that it has the right texture meaning like your your meat or your filling is shredded correctly mm. Those are just a few little um, tips and tricks for you. Um, so tell me, guys, what do you think so far? Have you had croquetas? What's your favorite one? What's your go-to? Um, is it your first time? Are you a newbie? Did you grow up eating like salmon croquettes? Was that a thing? Um, let's talk, guys. I'm making, uh, I'm making a little roux here. It's going to take a minute because we want this onion to sweat out. And once it's translucent, then we're ready to go to the next step, which is just adding some flour. Um, I think in the next interlude, I'll try to get uh, Cam 2 dialed back in so you guys can, can get some, some extreme close-ups. How's everybody doing on Facebook? Good? Yeah? All right, cool. Uh, so yeah, guys, talk to me. What's going on? Uh, I'm just going to go in, season up with a little salt here. And salt is going to help draw out the moisture in our onions, which will in turn slow down the cooking. And uh, again, we're just looking to sweat these onions out. We want this filling to be um, really well seasoned. And so, you know, going back to the fillings, right, you can... Um, you could uh, you can go with chicken like you know go, like go to the the supermarket pick up a rotisserie chicken um, shred that up real fine that's a, a great chicken croqueta filling right there um, you want to use the really good ham um, you know that's my favorite um, I've had uh, I've had um, you know some some really creative ones some some foie gras. Um, you know, sky's the limit. Uh, ham and cheese, you know, come up with a filling that's like a, a Cuban sandwich, you know, ham, Swiss, and a little mustard. Uh, Steve knows what's up, the Publix Croquetas. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Senor Hoff on the salmon croquettes. So, yeah, same thing. If uh, a lot of times you can make a disc of the salmon, right, an, a circular one, um, what you're looking for is like a really good... Um, a really good ratio of the surface texture to the filling. Uh, you don't want to make them real, real um, big in diameter because then the, the, the inside won't heat up. Um, the beautiful thing about the correct size croqueta, which we'll get into when we're, when we're forming, is they're generally like the size of a fat finger. Um, I would say they're probably about yay big. Um, right it's a it's a nice little cylinder of deliciousness um and if you have something that's super sort of like creamy right a filling that um maybe it, you don't think it would hold up in the fryer you think it would explode uh pro tip is that you could put it in the freezer right and get it real rock hard then cut it then bread it uh so we're going to get into all that we're going to do standard breading procedure um and, and go through the whole nine yards. Lenny, welcome to the game. 
Uh, Lenny's not familiar with the croquette. Uh, how about fritters? Uh, you know, same idea. Um, you know, like uh, black eyed pea fritter. Um, all these things are, you know, stretch of the imagination. You can call it a croquetta. Um, you know, there's some people doing some really cool versions of them. I thought I'd give you the skinny on the on the OG, the chicken croquetta, and then we'll do the mushroom one again, uh, keeping it vegan. All right, this uh, beverage is going down quite nicely, I gotta say. So now I'm going in with my flour. Um, kinda sucks that I can't show you uh, on cam two. My apologies, but uh, just imagine that flour is going in to the to the mixture of onion and and butter, um, and and that's how you make a roux. Uh, we just want to mix it real well. Again, it's on real, real, real low because we don't want to get much color on this. We're going to keep it uh, nice and blanquito. See what I did there? And so if you're doing this here, right, this, um, this onion uh, in, your, in your roux, you're thickening it up, and then we're going to add our milk, you're pretty close to, uh, to the traditional um sauce for for like say like mac and cheese right you could take bechamel you add cheese to it and you've got yourself um you've got yourself a, a base for for mac and cheese um you take your roux you add um you add chicken stock and some dairy product to it you've got yourself a velouté uh, you know, that, that's all the mother sauces, all the French mother sauces. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's a basis for cuisine. You can go a hundred different ways from, from center to make whatever you're looking for. Um, Steve on the croquetas, they're usually fried. Um, you know, you could you bake them? Probably. Would you want to? Nah. You want to get that real nice crisp crust. Um... You know, think of it kind of like fried chicken where you're getting that beautiful um, crust. Or say like you took cream of corn and you suspended that and then you, uh, then you um, breaded it and fried it. There you go. Cream corn croquetta. Uh, Michelle knows what's up with the ham croquetta in between the saltines and a little lime. I got the side. And uh, Henry has never met a croquetta he didn't like. Shouts to Henry, and here we go. Our roux has come together, and so we're gonna switch over to the whisk, and we're gonna go, I'm gonna cut the heat on this real quick, uh, and then just listen to this. And so we're just whisking in our milk to this roux, and so what you do is add a little at a time and whisk, 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 whisk. That's how you avoid lumps. Uh, no lumpy, uh, no lumpy sauce here, everybody. And so again, just a little more. I'm whisking away. Imagine that a sauce was thick and now it is getting thinner and it sort of clumps up in your whisk like, yeah. And that's when I like to switch over. So I'm going to get it back on the heat, real, real low at this point. And I'm going back to the spat. This is a high heat spatula. Uh, please know the difference between your spatulas. You know, the, um, there's spatulas to work with cold stuff like whipped cream, and then there's the high heat spat, with, which you can cook with. Uh, if it's not high heat spat, please don't cook with it. So real slowly we go with the milk, uh, little by little, we want to incorporate it in. And again, we're just looking for a nice smooth texture here because what we end up with in this pan is what you're going to end up as your filling uh, for your croquetta. So again, if you wanted to add like corn to this mix, you know, you'd have like a cream corn croquetta. Um, chop up a bunch of spinach. You've got a spinach croquetta. Uh, you can even add a little cheese, you know, like spinach and, um, I don't know, Swiss cheese makes a good one. Uh, 
Uh, sky's the limit. Hope you guys get the point. Um, and so, going back to that recipe, if you guys haven't found it in the description, um, we had our roux, our onions cooked in butter, then we hit it with flour, and then it was 375 milliliters of milk. And now I'm just cooking it out, stir, 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 so that we try to get it nice and smooth. And now what you want to do is just cook out this uh, flour, like that raw flour. I'm going to go ahead and add the heavy cream. And this is just going to add a little bit of richness to it. And, and this is a pretty forgiving recipe here. Um, you know, as many times as I've made this before, um, you know, you can wing it to a certain extent. You know, once you have the roux, um, when you're adding your liquids, you're just looking for a consistency at that point. Um, you know, so if you sort of have a feel for this thing and you know what you're going for um, on the finished texture, it's going to be a bit pasty, right? It's going to be a bit thick. That's what you need so that when it cools down, you know, it goes from being a liquid to a solid. And then when you chill it, it goes back to being a solid. Does that make sense? So you're cooking this to a certain consistency so that when you chill it, it'll become hard. And then so you, sh you shape it and then you fry it. And then as you bite into it, it becomes liquid. Uh, and that's how you get a creamy croqueta. Or a croquette, you know, not everybody's in Miami. We, we like to give you, you know, the low down, the, uh, the sabor, the, uh, the little bit of Latin flair. So this has come out quite nice. I'm going to cut the heat again. And then I, you could probably get the gist of this sort of like gloopiness. Um, I like it to be nice and velvety. And so I'm going to grab um, my beautiful chicken stock that you're going to see. And I'm going to take just a little bit of that. And, uh, and, and just sort of smooth this out. And so while I finish this, uh, Jose, a little, little change up on things. Let's show everybody uh, how to cook a chicken. cook a chicken um, and we're gonna get into that in just a wee bit second but you know what time it is it's time for another cocktail so we're going round two uh, 
so yeah, Michael, on the um, pressure cooker whole chicken, uh, there's very few ways uh, that are more efficient and, um, and result in a, a better whole chicken than throwing it in a pressure cooker. Um, you know, the carrots, celery are just to boost up the flavor. Um, and so you get two for two, right? You're getting that flavorful broth and then you're getting, or soup, uh, and then you're getting that amazing chicken. Um, you know, if you're looking to cook rice, that liquid is gold. Um, if you are making, say, croquetas, you want that liquid to sort of thin out, which we're going to get to in just a sec. But daddy's thirsty and I am ready for another cocktail. So round two, in our tin, we're going with a little fresh ice. We'll grab ourselves a lumper of an ice cube because we're going old fashioned. How old fashioned? 19th century. This is uh, one of the OG whiskey cocktails um, and my homies at Bar Lab hooked me up with this super, super dope cocktail kit. Um, they're sending these, they're shipping these all across the nation. Uh, and I know they're uh, going to expand. Um, they got the super dope garnish game on point. Uh, so I like to hang this little, little sucker from my glass. And um, you know, it comes with everything you need to make your cocktail. Uh, this is one of my absolute all time favorite cocktails ever. And that is the Cocoa Puff Old Fashioned. So if you're traditionally making an old fashioned, uh, like oh, way back in the day, they would muddle um, a cherry, like a maraschino cherry, and an orange in a glass, in a rocks glass. You hit it with some bitters, ice, rye, simple syrup to balance it out. The homies at Bar Lab, the good fine folks, have made these super dope um, cocktails in a bag. Um, and what it is, it's already ready to go. So this one is cocoa puff infused, um, and it, it's, it's really well balanced. It makes two cocktails, and, and that's what I need at this point to finish up the show. Cam 2 is officially dead, and so I'm going to have uh, a couple of these cocoa puff old fashions. Uh, so just like the instructions say, I'm going to cut up in the bag, and then the bag is going to go over my ice in my tin. Just squeeze it all out. And then uh, I've got the Woodford, which is one of my preferred whiskeys. Um, I'm sure I'll be sipping on a uh, Woodford on the rocks, uh, contemplating how the show went, uh, thinking about all y'all. What's everybody out there drinking? Let me know, drop it in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. And so I'm going I'm going three ounces on this because I'm going to make two cocktails out of it. Boom. Steve BM, my dram brother, just finished up an old fashioned. Yes, sir. Giddy up. So here we go. Stir, stir, stir. I'm going to give it a little taste because I haven't had this one in the bag. Last time I had a Cocoa Puff old fashioned was at the original Broken Shaker. How many years ago was that? Let's see. It's a touch on the sweet side, so I'm gonna stretch it. I'm gonna go another ounce of, uh, of this Woodford. Uh, no sweet cocktails for me. So in we go. Ooh, I do, I do get the bitters, and it does have that sort of cocoa effect. Oh man, those guys are, are just pure genius. So stir, 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 stir. We're getting that dilution, right? You're watering it down just a touch. That's the idea of the ice. And so in our glass, strained, oh, making a bit of a mess. It's okay. Strained right over that giant cube. You would think I would have like a proper shaker at this point, but uh, but I broke it. Haha. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, orange peel garnish. And that's it. Cocktail number two. While I take a sip of this beauty, Jose, how about we take a look at the Bar Lab cocktail kits?
from those cocktail kits, um, I mean, TBH, I don't know how much they cost, but you can go to uh, shopbarlab.com. Uh, it's bar-lab.com and, and check it out. Mm, 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 mm. Cheers to Brian with the uh, Templeton on the rocks. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Lenny with the Templeton on the rock. Brian's doing the sweet tea lemon concoction. I'm not sure if that has any alcohol on it, but uh, you're heading in the right direction, my man. Arnold Palmer's never done anybody wrong in my eyes. And so let's take a look at my handiwork here uh, and see how we're doing on the old uh, Croquetta uh, train so we keep on track, guys. Uh, so in my pot, um, as you saw in the video, I'm just going to start pulling out the old chicken and shred it right away. Uh, so I got my sauce here, right? So super, super tender chicken. Uh, one of the amazing things about cooking chicken on the bone is that you get all that extra flavor. Uh, your bone broth becomes amazingly infused. Uh, you know, I like to throw nice fresh herbs in there. Um, you know, bay leaf, some fresh thyme, because uh, you can never have enough thyme, right? And, and just make that, you want to make that, um, you want to make that broth delicious because it's going to in turn make your, your meat delicious, right? So it's two for two. You want to make sure your chicken's good, but you also want to make sure your broth is good. Um, and so you could see how tender this is, right? It's just shredding. Uh, I could do this with a spoon. Um, I just happen to pick up these, these suckers. And I'm just shredding away my chicken. It's still warm. My, my bechamel concoction uh, is also still warm. And so we'll whip the two together and we'll check out the consistency and then we'll let that chill. So guys, how we doing? It's Wednesday. We're making croquetas. I'm drinking a Cocoa Puff Old Fashioned. Mmm. 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 That is a delicious... Mmm. -hmm. That is a delicious cocktail. Not gonna lie. I'm pretty excited. And so just finishing up the here, I've got the shredded chicken. It's about, it's just under a pound of chicken for the amount of sauce. It's about 350 grams. And so I'm whipping this up. Um, it, it's, uh, it's not quite smooth, but it's nice and thick. So I'm gonna start introducing the shredded chicken straight into, um, straight into this bechamel. And I'm giving it a bit of an eyeball. Because at this point, you know, you can eyeball the finished texture. You want to make sure it's thick enough, yet still creamy. Uh, you know, the best, uh, the best way I can describe this step here is that this is what you want to take a bite into, right? When you have your croqueta, your croquette, your fritter, your, fritter, your cylinder, whatever you're calling it. So chicken's in. I'm going to start incorporating it in. You know, it's almost like uh, like mashed potatoes that your mom used to make if your mom made wallpaper paste mashed potatoes. Does that make sense? Um, you need that consistency. That's why we cook the flour into the fat. And then what you can do here, right? I mean, you could see that pretty much holds up. What you can do is you have all this lovely broth. You know, mine's full of thyme. Um, it's got a bunch of little thyme leaves in there. And so you can just add a touch of this to thin it out. And whisk, 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 whisk. And that looks about to be right for me. So I'm gonna season it up. So this needs to taste like your croquetta, right? So you need to make sure that it uh, is seasoned correctly. Um, some people add nutmeg. I'm not a huge fan. Um, you know, salt, maybe some white pepper. 
but this sucker is white, you know, like, um, this would be called Blanc de Blancs in, if you, you know, the French term. And yeah, Michael, it's super, super tender chicken here because the pressure cooker, what it does is it just extracts all that marrow from the bones. You're getting full, full flavor. Um, and so a little tip and trick here is when you have your mix, you want to go ahead and spread it out kind of thin, right? So I like to go back on that, uh, that same sheet tray so it gets spread out. When you spread your filling out, you don't have a big clump to try to cool down, right? This will dissipate the heat much, much faster. This is a little like restaurant style technique. Um, it comes in handy all the time. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't, you, you know, anything you're doing, you're doing polenta, you're doing rice, anything that needs to be chilled after it's cooked, this is the way to do it. And just like that, we got croquetta filling. Uh, it's a little dark over there, how about that? All right, guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, mushroom croquetas, and we're gonna wrap it up here. El uno, el unicornio. El blanco, el blanco, sale a lujo. Doble nueve es el que menos pesa. Se estrese, le dice el Lili. Le dice a todos. Nueve es para mí. El uno se le dice a la puntilla. El dos, la mariposa. El siete, el, el apestoso. Y el otro tiene dos no dos de nombre Octavio, eh, Ochoa, eh, hay otro que te dice eh, no me recuerdo cómo es el otro, pero tiene otro. Así como se juega. A ver, este. a ver. Por arriba ni por abajo. for the fry. Uh, usually it's a little more dynamic with the old Cam 1, Cam 2, but uh, you know, we're making a live cooking show here. Not everything is perfect. 
So guys, what do you think? Is there any, are there any questions at this point? Uh, that now would be the time because we're going to rock and roll on the, uh, on the uh, finishing here with the croquetas. We're going to fry up some of these chicken croquetas I just made. And um, we'll most certainly do the vegan mushroom croquetta as well. Um, you know, you, you got to search for balance. Sorry, I'm just uh, dialing in the fry pot because we need to make sure our oil is hot. I apologize for that. Um, so guys, tell me, what do you think? Michael, Brian, Lenny, Michelle, Bev, what do you think? Are, are we on track? Are the croquetas going to come out in time? Can you believe how delicious my Cocoa Puff Old Fashion is? Because, mmm, it is good. Press and hold the settings lock button. Okay, got it. Sorry about that. I know that was super awkward, but you know, we need to make sure that the oil is hot enough to fry the croquetas. But yeah, if you're making croquetas at this point, you want to have your fry pot or, you know, like around 350. So that's heating up off to the side. I've got my filling. Uh, this is the one that I just made prior to the show. Uh, Jose got to watch a little behind the scenes. And that has been chilled. Because uh, look at this. You could see on the chilled filling, right, that it holds almost like a solid. And then so here we have standard breading procedure. It's flour first. I'm going to crack some eggs. And then uh, panko's great. I have these uh, Cuban style crackers because we're keeping it Miami 100 most definitely. Uh, yeah, Brian, I got you on the, uh, on the croquetta, my dude. I'll FedEx those things right over. So cracking our eggs. I like to use these, uh, these little, uh, containers, um, to, um, to bread in. You know, it just sort of makes it handy. They're all the same size. They fit on the counter in front of you. You want to whisk your egg. I'm gonna put just a little touch of water in my eggs to sort of thin it out. So the concept here of standard breading, right? This is the same for, for anything that you're doing, whether it's cutlets, um, you know, whatever you're trying to, to bread up. And it's so, it's the, the item goes into flour first so that the egg sticks. And then the egg makes the breadcrumbs stick. You know, if you've ever made chicken cutlets, veal cutlets, same idea. You know, panko works great because it's always crispy. I thought, you know, we'd, uh, we'd go Super Miami here because we rep in the 305. And we're going flour, egg, and then these are the, the water crackers, right? The old, the old Miami water crackers. So... You want to just take a nice uh, little spoonful. Something that's cool here, um, if you get yourself an ice cream scoop, uh, you can keep it even in water. And so that'll make all your croquetas the same size. Uh, so scoop goes in. And just go ahead and start to flatten that out. And, you know, you want it to be kind of like a fat, um, I don't know, you want to call it like a cigar. Um you know, a really fat thumb, that's about the, uh, the diameter of it. Again, you want to err on the um, not, so, not so thick side so that the center gets nice and creamy. So from the flour, we go into the egg wash, and then I'm just going to grab a little uh, forky do. I like to turn it, turn it. And then so out of the egg wash, give it a drain into the breadcrumbs, and then it can hang out there. Let's do another one in slow-mo. So we're wrapping it up here, guys, on the croquetta. So I'm going to drop a couple of these suckers. And then uh, let's go extended uh, hours. I'm going to show you the vegan mushroom croquetta as well if you all want to hang out with me. But I appreciate you all rocking with me on the live stream every Wednesday here. 
me and Jose making TV for y'all. Here we go. There's number two. Oil is almost there. Here's number three. And so you can see this is the process, right? You know, you could do a hundred of these, keep them in the freezer. And then whenever you're in the mood for some croquetas, you know, kids are hungry, they're screaming, Daddy, Daddy, I want something to eat. You know, you give them a croquetta. Here, stuff that in your face. See how delicious that is, huh? So, boom, I got a couple in the crumbs. I'm going to bread those up. And then like we do on a new tray. And so you want to just make sure on your standard breading that everything uh, is, is coated evenly, right? You don't want the uh, croquetta itself to be exposed or you may have a little accident. And then something that's real cool is you could just take these breaded croquetas and keep them in the freezer and then fry them straight from the freezer, right? You don't have to defrost them from frozen to fryer to on the plate. Guys, wrapping it up here, Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up, croquetas and cocktails. Are there any questions at this point? You all wanna give a little love to Jose for keeping us on point? Let me know. Now is the time. We're going in with the first batch, making a little room. Oh, look at that, my cocktail. Might as well have another sip of that. Cheers, everybody. Mmm. 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 Shouts to Bar Lab for making delicious cocktail kits. Let's fry these suckers up. Yeah. Here we go. Oh boy, I wish Camp 2 was working at this point. But you know, technology, it happens, right? So in the pot, 350. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Now we go with number two. Here we go with number three. And so this is already cooked, right? We went ahead and cooked out. The chicken's already cooked, right? Um, your sauce is already cooked, you know, you cook out the flavor of your bechamel. And so all you need to do here is get it nice and golden brown so that the exterior is nice and crispy. And then the interior is nice and runny, sort of smooth. Brian's thinking about goldfish and crusted croquettes. I don't know, sounds a little crazy for me, my dude. Uh, you know, on those same same lines, you know, you could do something like, um, you could do your coquetas in, um, you know, I think the popular, like, 420 version is to take uh, hot Cheetos these days. Uh, if you look at the kids on TikTok, anything you can crust in, uh, in, hot, in hot Cheetos uh, or, or Takis, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so these suckers are just like that. They're pretty golden brown. I'm going to give them one more second. You know, just straight up uh, canola oil, whatever you have in your fry pot is going to work out just fine. And so here it is, bringing it to a close, croquetas and cocktails. I'm going to run around and just try to give you guys a bit of a close-up so you get the food porn shot on this. Taking it to the plate. You know, you could dust these. Just a little salt. Right? So that, that crust gets some seasoning as well. The inside is seasoning. It's nice and oozy-goozy. And so you want to make sure the outside has a little bit of salt. You want to squeeze a little lime on it. Coming around to you. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. Croquetas on the live stream. Let's see if we can crack one of these suckers open right into the cam. Cam 1's getting a workout today. 
And there it is, oozy goozy, not the best light, my apologies, but croquetas on the live stream. Guys, there it is, Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up every Wednesday. I'm going to rock it out with these vegan mushroom croquetas, so if y'all want to hang out, appreciate it. I'm going to have another cocktail as well, and uh, you know... We'll do a little, a little extra credit here, a little after hours. Uh, yeah, so guys, I appreciate you all hanging out for, for the show. If you want to hang out, I'm going to bang out some of these mushroom ones real quick so you see an alternate. Apologize for the uh, technical difficulties. It does happen. I still have my glass. I still have my little, uh, I've got my little setup here. So remember when I told you we, you know, it was good for two cocktails. And, and so here we go. Hey, what's going on, Craig? There it is, cocktail number two. Well, that's just number three, really. Cocoa Puff Old Fashion. We're making croquetas. I'm going to show you guys how the uh, mushroom croquettes come out now. Jose, what do you think, man? Wrap the show? A little after hours action? Is everybody hanging out? Mmm. I want to make sure to let everybody know that uh, Cocoa Puff Old Fashioned number two is actually better than the first one. It has gotten the proper dilution. So, it's been watered down just enough by that ice, and it is chilled deliciously. I'm gonna give it another little freshen up on the orange peel, and then let's get into these mushroom croquetas. So on the orange peel, right, here's a little technique worth mentioning on the old after show, is that you wanna take the peel, and then with the uh, pith, right, the white part is towards you, you wanna sort of squeeze it over your cocktail and that's going to release those natural oils. Uh, we almost lost our little garnish there. Alright, so guys, there's heat game on so I want to just bang this sucker out. This is what I did with the mushroom croquetas, so you guys saw it, right? You saw the video. And um... Jose, tell me, uh, what can we do? Is there anything I can do to fix that, or, or are we just stuck with it, dude? All right. Yeah, guys, again, apologies. If you're still hanging, I appreciate you. I'm just going to do it real fast. Uh, this is the mushroom, so I put it into a cylinder. Because the mushroom, the vegan filling is really, really soft. And so you can just take this cylinder and cut right through the plastic. Uh, and then you have what are like these patties, right? And they, they hold their form because it's frozen. All right, so I got two out of that. So now I'm going to reset, since it's vegan, I want to reset flour. I've got my crumbs, the same cracker crumbs because they're water crackers. And then I have this, this is uh, just egg, it's a plant-based egg. Uh, so if you're, if you're trying to you know, stick to the um, plant-based diet, it's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, I thought I would pivot a little and try something new. I'm not doing meat at all. Um, okay, let's see if I can move this out of the way. All right, so there we go. We've got our flour, we've got our cracker mixture, and then this um, plant-based eggs. Smells pretty good. 
And so, you know, there's a couple different things that you can use if you're trying to, you know, go plant-based. Uh, I thought this was the easiest version. And so I'm just taking these cylinders and they're, they're real, real delicate because this one, this mushroom croquetta, it's really, really liquid, right? The filling is like a soup. Um, you know, think of like uh, cream of spinach, cream of mushroom. And then so you just want to capture that essence, right? That creaminess into, this is a flat disc. It's a little harder to see without Cam 2 working. Um, so then the flat disc in flour, I'm going to put it in the just for eggs. Let's do two. Guys, who's still rocking with me after hours? Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Three cocktails in, two croquetas down. I'm gonna bang out some of these mushroom croquetas, and that's a wrap for tonight. Next week, we're doing grilling. The grand finale for season two. Steve's here, Bev's here. Appreciate y'all. So, mushroom croquetas, I'm just gonna give them a little flip. They're super, super delicate. And then from that just egg, they're going into the crumbs. So you gotta work real, real lightly here with the mixture. I'm just gonna take the crumbs and cover it. And now, so what I would do normally here is I would take this mixture and I would freeze it again, you know? and then fry it so you're 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 assured that it's gonna hold but uh you know we're an hour deep into the show i've got a couple cocktails in me so i'm going straight to the fryer y'all no swap outs this is a live cooking show jose what do you think man do like a you know hail mary full of grace uh, santa maria uh, i don't even know at this point but here we go mushroom croquetta vegan wrapping it up in the fryer if it explodes i'm just walking away i'm telling you now who knows what's gonna happen it seems to be holding up nicely so i'm gonna drop another one i'm most definitely eating a couple of these suckers Woo -wee! i think i may have created the ultimate uh veggie burger the ultimate uh the ultimate vegan veggie burger at this point because you could put one of these on a bun a little special sauce boom got yourself a vegan burger made a bit of a mess with the crumbs these suckers are frying away they're spitting and spewing let me get a draining wrap real quick smallest uh, draining rack possible for two mushroom vegan croquettes. Uh, guys, whoever said it was going to be easy making a live cooking show for YouTube, I don't even know who that person would be. So again, it's vegan, so I'm switching out my utensils. Taking another sip of my old-fashioned old Cocoa Puff old fashion Shouts to Bar Lab. Who's still chilling? Who's watching basketball tonight? Guys, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube, please do so. Jose, you hanging in there, my dude? All right. And just like that, golden brown and delicious. Michelle's hanging with me. Brian's hanging with me. Oh, Steve knows what's up. Two mushroom croquettas are super successful as well. Man, we're two for two on the croquettas. I'm going to season these suckers up. Give them a little dusting. Salt. So, uh, so Brian, on that, um, on that idea of the black bean and rice croquetta, same thing. You know, same recipe as the mushrooms, substitute mushrooms uh, for black beans. And this thing is like surface of the sun hot. I wish I can come closer and show it to you so you could see it. Um, 
I am showing it to the Facebook live crowd. Uh, if you're on Facebook, take a look at that. It is a beautiful cylinder of deliciousness. Guys, love y'all. I appreciate it. Another week in the books. Next week, the grand finale. Anybody in Miami wants to come pick up grilled foods, we're rocking it out to make a super dynamic season finale. I love y'all. Here's a bite. Mmm. Holy crap. It's oozy, goozy, delicious. I've outdone myself this time. No garnish, no sauce, just mushroom croquetta. Mmm. Only thing I can make it better, snack and a cocktail. Got my Coco Puff Old Fashion. Shouts to Bar Lab. Shouts to Jose. Shouts to everybody for joining me. And good night. Who's the chef who's gonna show you how to impress?